Okay, hi guys, um, I'm Jack and I'm going to be teaching you guys, for a change, how to play Yu-Gi-Oh's trading card game. And this is something I'm quite familiar with because I used to play it a lot as, um, well, a few years ago. I recently kind of got back into an online game version of it and, well, since um, I found that trying, I attempted to teach it to my sister the other day, it didn't go well. So, in comparison, I'm going to try and teach you guys how to play using my own way. And, um... Okay, first thing first, we're going to get the introduction out of the way. I will be using my Dark World deck, since it's probably got most of the um, um, stuff I'm going to cover in my videos covered. Because it's got virtually every kind of card known to man in it. And um, what else have we got on my little script here? Um, yeah, we're going to be going through stuff like the game out, the decks, the rule basics, such as going first, life points, etc. Other stuff in this part, we're going to cover like tokens, counters, dice, whatever you may need for the game. Okay, so let's get things off with the basics, right? You typically require um, a deck of, no not 50, 40 to 60 cards, which I've got here. I've got something like about 44, maybe 43 in here. And they can be compiled of monster cards, which are orange or yellow, and uh, blue cards, which are spells, pink ones, which are traps. I'll be going through that individually and separately. Um, next up, you may require, and this is a may, you don't need this, but you may also need a, um, a side deck or an, a side deck which um, compiles of about 10 or 15 cards that you may exchange during a match or something like that. If you're having like a best of three, you can exchange with this with your own deck, but you have to put, I need to breathe at some point. Um, so say if I gave one card to this, I would then have to take one out and give it to this, and then I would have to set that aside. It, it works like that, the extra deck. Okay, next up we have Game Mat. Now you technically don't need this at home, it's just a piece of paper, you can just work out the positions as you go. But, let's get the basics covered with. The deck zone is the bottom right. This bit here, this bit here is your deck zone. <sighs> I really need to breathe a bit more. Um, so the deck zone belongs here, the graveyard is directly above it in the top right. That is where a lot of your cards will probably end up. Next up we have the biggies, the monster card zone and the spell and trap zones. The monster card zones are for the orange, yellow, white, purple and blue cards, which are ritual, fusion, uh, normal monster cards, effect monster cards and the synchro monster cards. As well as a couple of others which I'll be telling you about in a couple of later parts. Spell or trap zones for the pink and blue cards only. Or some monster effects may allow you to put monsters in there, but there's a few of those, there's not many. And that's those bits discussed. Now, we, I've kind of had to make do a bit with the space. Okay, on the top left we have your field card zone. This is for a special spell which, can, um, which you can play at any time if you have it in your hand. And you can put it there, and it gives a effect to the, all the cards on the entire field. And the, finally, we have the extra deck zone, where your fusion, ritual, synchro, and XYZ monsters belong, which um, I'm not too familiar with. I'm not keen on using... Hello, puss. <laughs> uh, she wants attention. Yeah, so those monsters go here. Okay, so I'm going to set the camera back up. Here we go. The cat wants to leave. Two seconds. She really needs to learn to be patient. Okay, next up we have life points. Now, you'll need a piece of paper and a pencil or two calculators. So, any way you can make sure you've got um, a way of measuring it. I've personally done this because I just had a little time on my hands to find calculators. So, you start typically at 8,000 each or 4,000 each, depending on the game or tournament or whatever you're in. And it can, I've, I've heard stuff about handicaps, I'm not entirely sure if it's true, but apparently you can have like 1,000 life point handicaps if you're not terribly good or up against someone pretty good at this. So, say so I'm not pretty good at this, so I probably get a handicap as well. So, let's do that, put that back there. And typically in this game, it's the first person to deplete the life points to zero who um, loses. So the person who has their life points depleted to zero loses the game. It's difficult standing up and trying to explain stuff. Um, I need to sit down and get a chair or something. Uh, we'll get that in the next bit. 
Okay, uh, other things you may need. Stuff like counters or tokens. Now, tokens, um, you can get these online at all. You can just get pictures and just put an attacking defense stat in them. But there's stuff like you get a trading card game or the card maker that's online. I'm not entirely sure what the web address is, but I'm sure if you type into Google, it'll come up. And yeah, you can make your own tokens there, or you can just get them off the internet and pictures and print them off. Um, next up, coins. You may need coins for certain effects, so typically I just prefer to then just use the coins and the coppers. Uh, dice, some of them you may need. You can use the counter at some effects. And finally, um, counters. Now, some cards require counter effects in which you put counters on things. Now, I use coins for that because um, I just don't want to do anything else. It's the easiest option and it's the easiest way you can tell what to do. But if certain different counters are required, then you may want to change the type of coin you use for each one. So, that's basically it for the introduction. Um, yeah, so I'm going to be covering card analysis in the next part. So, um, keep watching guys if you want to learn how to play Yu-Gi-Oh! Trading Card Game.